Dudu's trying to go where he pleases, but KT are being frustrating as he wanders on in. Okay, Chovy into... Oh, is this the opportunity? They take down the Aphelios as... He finds the perfect execution, but so does Dove. The Lee Sin also going to fall down as Trophy still trying to fight this one out. Dove in trouble. The five-point strike is good. That's the triple. That's the quadra. Hop's going to be the pentakill and Chovy. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Outplay by Play. Last week, we took a look at Fnatic's big brain draft that led to their masterclass victory over longtime rivals in G2. Today, we're heading into the LCK, and specifically, the Church of Chovy, to take a look at the Superstar mid laner's first ever pentakill in pro play. So pack your shit and hop in the Chovy backpack as we take a deep dive into the mid laner's stellar performance that gave the edge to Hanwha Life Esports over KT Rolster. To kick things off, both teams played a close back and forth as KT looked to put the pressure on Hanwha Life Esports' bot lane and give Noah the early lead and first blood. But just minutes later, Deft responded with some kills of his own, leaving both AD carries sitting on two kills apiece. What's important to note here is the compositions on both sides and how well they play to their strengths. KT opt for a standard composition, placing emphasis on team fighting and strong engage and peel on both Volibear and Thresh, as well as heavy damage from Aphelios and Gangplank. Hanwha Life Esports, on the other hand, look to play more around their hyper carries with lots of poke, mobility, and disengage throughout their lineup to weave in and out of KT's crosshairs. With that in mind, it's crucial to understand that Hanwha Life Esports' game plan is focused around Kog'Maw and Akali to strive in the late game, whereas KT looked to prevent them from snowballing into those later stages and win through teamfights by getting Aphelios ahead. 11 minutes in, we see exactly that, as KT puts the focus once again in the bot lane, this time going for a tower dive onto Deft. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just crab rape to come through there. There's the flash forward into the play as Hop misses the hook as Deft just stands his ground. Can the Akathian surprise land? And the answer is almost because Hop has to break his stopwatch. As the game went on, both teams continued to trade blows and objectives, with KT securing both the Ocean and Cloud Drake, while Hanwha Life Esports took both Rift Heralds. 19 minutes in, the game is still dead even, but favors Hanwha Life Esports just slightly. With three towers to just the one destroyed by KT, Hanwha Life Esports have the advantage of map control. As both teams begin to set up around the Infernal Drake, it's KT who make the call for an engage, with Dove coming in from the flank after teleporting behind the Dragon Pit just earlier. The problem? Well, with just a Volley Bear and Threshold available to them, this fight proved to be extremely risky. Knowing that Cleanse is on cooldown for death, Blank dives in for the engage, and the chain of CC from KT is enough to eviscerate the Kog'Maw from the fight. But with all summoner spells and ultimates still available on four members of Hanwha Life Esports and a lingering Akali on the back line, it's KT who gets destroyed in the skirmish as it's a one for three. With that team fight, Hanwha Life Esports would go on to secure the Infernal Drake and stretch their lead. This would foreshadow what's to come and ultimately be a turning point for the rest of the game. Despite KT being able to kill off the Hanwha Life Esports AD carry, they simply can't win the fight just because Akali is still alive. And the second that Noah is deleted from the team fight, it's all downhill from there. 22 minutes in, we see yet another instance of exactly that. This time with some Church of Chovy flair. As Hanwha Life Esports set up for a 1-3-1, putting pressure on every lane, watch Deft, who gets a little too aggressive and gets picked off yet again, this time in the mid lane. After Depth falls, you can see the rest of the side laners begin to collapse on mid. At this point, KT have the advantage with the pick they just found onto one of the carries, and realistically just have to put their focus onto Chovy, or at least be aware of him. Take a look at the map. KT are fully aware of where Chovy is, as he's clearing a control ward, but still chooses to ignore him and re-engage onto Dudu. Why? I don't know. As Dudu Swag walks around the four members of KT, watch them literally hold hands to try and pick him off, but struggle due to the insane amount of mobility, health, and healing from the Mundo. From there, it's all over for KT, as they've walked right into the Church of Chovy and have no way out. 
Watch Chobi, who puts on a display of mechanical brilliance to showcase and flex his 72% win rate on a collie. After flashing over the wall, he pops R1 and throws a combo of double five-point strikes, auto, and twilight shroud to chunk down and dance around the members of KT. Meanwhile, take a look at Arthur, who ward hops into the fray and lands Tempest and Thirsting Slash onto five players, before Chovy waltzes in to execute Noah with another Q. And just like that, KT are doomed. From there, Chovy continues to dance around the Shroud before setting his sights onto Doran, using Auto, Q, R2, and predicting the movement of Doran to land the Shuriken Flip as Doran flashes away to then execute him with the five-point strike. Then, it's really just a walk in the park for the star mid laner, as he makes quick work of Dove with a flurry of autos and five-point strikes, then uses Shuriken Flip to close the distance onto Blank and execute him with a Q, then a combo Q and auto to kill off Harp and seal the deal. KT had fallen into a trap, and with Chovy activating God Mode to mop the floor for a pentakill, it really was just a matter of time until the game was over. Arthur would go on to find an insane kill despite getting caught out, using the impact of Dragon's Rage and a sonic wave to eviscerate Noah. And Chovy, well, he was just playing with his food at this point. Every time, whereas the Kog'Maw is just so much stronger. Yep, uh, Doran, you're in a bit of trouble here. As yeah, Chovy does have the ulti and is gonna easily tidy up the gangplank. At 28 minutes, Deft once again gets caught out of position and meets his death, but is avenged by Vista, who flashes forward for the Ignite kill onto Noah. And so, with Noah now dead and double Infernal Drakes, as well as Baron Buff on Hanwha Life Esports, they can march down mid to end the game. As they approach the base, it's Arthur who once again shows off his Lee Sin mechanics, landing Sonic Wave onto Dove for the Insect Under Tower, while Chovy dives in to clean house. Dove and Chovy actually both end up popping Zonias, but once they come out of stasis, watch Chovy, who is really just unstoppable at this point, punish Harp's mistime hook to delete the back line using perfect execution, five point strike, and an auto. Dudu then flashes over the wall to secure the kill onto Dove, and Chovy charges forward, landing Shuriken Flip onto Doran, who flashes away in desperation, but is eventually executed by Chovy for the triple kill and the ace. And just like that, the KT base would come crumbling down. Noah eventually respawns for a brief moment to greet the Hanwha Life Esports Cavalry. But once again, Chovy, who is now wearing his food, decides he wants more, flashing forward for a combo of Shuriken Flip, five point strike, and an auto to delete the lone man standing. I'm Captain Flowers, and that is it for this week's episode of the Out Play by Play. Let me know what you think. Is Akali broken, or is this just a glimpse of what's to come for Chovy and Hanwha Life Esports? Remember to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to keep up with everything in the League of Legends Esports world, and I'll catch you next time.